بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر موونگ ٹوورڈز دی ڈائریکشن آف انڈرسٹینڈنگ اینڈ کمپریہنڈنگ اینڈ لوکنگ ایٹ دا ویریس ڈائمنشنالٹیز آف دا کنورژنس آف کارپوریٹ گورننس اوور ہسٹری اینڈ پالیٹکس ناؤ واٹ وی ہیو سین دیٹ ان دا پاسٹ دے ور تھری میجر ماڈلس دی امیرکن ماڈل دی یورپین ماڈل اینڈ دین دا فار ایسٹرن ماڈل لیڈ بائی جاپین ناؤ واٹ وی سی از that with the passage of time and especially uh, with uh, the uh, advent of the 21st century, we see that these three uh, disparate models basically started converging together, overlapping together and seeing the commonalities between each other due to the factor of globalization and also the, uh, the dis dispersion of uh, the virtual context of governance and uh, of the corporate world. So what we see is, is that McDonald uh, basically uh, looks at three relevant values and those three values are efficiency, equity and participation. Now what we see is, is that all of the stakeholders involved with corporate governance or with the performance of the organization should be focusing on these three core values and that is how to make the organization more efficient which would in other words uh, enhance productivity and performance and output and profits. Secondly, that how is it that the organization can make equitable decisions so that it could benefit all the stakeholders concerned. And thirdly, that there should be a participative approach. Now, uh, when we uh, look at the precise balance between values, uh, then uh, basically it is a choice of what kind of corporate governance system is basically adopted. So this is uh, McDonald basically propagated his own model of convergence of corporate governance. Now, we also look at Mark Rowe's model And his research basically was looking at the path dependence thesis and secondly at the different political forces in America who resisted the effort at concentration of ownership or ownership through financial institutions. So basically Mark Rowe also was looking at this particular perspective from a historical context that how there was this resistance and how there were uh, these speed breakers which basically uh, were looking Uh, at the different efforts of concentration of ownership or also the fact that the financial institutions who were the venture capitalists, they would be the ones who would be uh, controlling the organizations and they would be at the forefront of the stakeholders and therefore would be basically dominating corporate governance and looking at their own interest which basically hinged upon one element of profitability and therefore to create that balance it was very important uh, that there should be corporate governance uh, convergence and also Uh, value assimilation implementation and also a assimilation of the comprehension of values within a particular organization then we also look at the european social democracy model and that basically favored stakeholder interests particularly labor and this again can be seen as a reaction to the historical rise of fascism and communism so what we see is that basically because europe was adjacent to the soviet bloc where there was uh, communism and then again within Europe there was fascism also uh, taking a lot of emergence and because the divide between the proletariat and the bureaucracy uh, and the bourgeois and the aristocracy had basically dissipated and was evaporating therefore the concern of the labor force their rights uh, their uh, their environment and again uh, their uh, importance within the stakeholder framework of any corporate organization became very important and that was the basic focus uh, of the European uh, social democracy uh, model. Now, what we see, ladies and gentlemen, is that Flickstein and Freeland adopted a similar historical view that the form of governance is a result of wider political and institutional developments, the timing of entry into industrialization and institutionalization of that process. So, what we see again is uh, that at the end of the 20th century, there was this institutionalization which was taking place. New frameworks, new matrices, new networks, uh, new structures were being developed through re-engineering and restructuring. And they were becoming more equitable uh, and more efficient. And again, uh, looking at the different contextualization of corporate governance and seeing that how the interests of the different players and the different stakeholders and the different shareholders were being met in the best possible way. So that is uh, how we see uh, this development taking place. The role of states in regulating uh, pro uh, property rights 
and the rules of competition between firms, the social organization of national uh, elites also uh, started gaining dominance. And we see that these various factors started uh, playing within the uh, context of convergence of corporate governance. The regulatory policy uh, in the United States uh, had the unintended consequence of pushing US companies in the direction of unrelated diversification. In Germany and Japan, it continued on a pre-war tra trajectory of discouraging mergers in favor of cartels. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that again, the, the contextualization within uh, the United States uh, basically was focusing on uh, different diversification, different expansion policies, and again, uh, it was uh, the, the, the pushing of the uh, shareholders for maximization of profits. While uh, in Japan, it was a little bit different and they, uh, rather than encouraging mergers, basically uh, favored cartels like we see how huge organizations emerge uh, like uh, Toyota, uh, like um, Nissan, uh, like Mitsubishi Bank, uh, like uh, we see that uh, the, the Honda uh, brand uh, emerged. Uh, so all of these big brands uh, and these big organizations were basically cartels. Uh, they emerged and we see that they started gaining uh, not only national prominence, but also global prominence. And the Americans basically fa favored mergers. So we see in America, multiple mergers taking place. And due to that, uh, there was a totally different context of corporate governance, uh, which could be seen in these different regions. In other words, modern regulatory policy in the US produced corporations who relied on markets to acquire ideas and talent, while in Germany and Japan, it produced corporations whose primary emphasis was on production. So we see that production efficiency basically emerging uh, in Europe and also in Japan. While uh, in America, we see uh, that it was all about uh, market acquisition. And uh, again, we see that uh, they did not focus on efficiency of production. And in the long run, what we see is that the European and the Japanese uh, model basically uh, gained supremacy over the American model. Uh, but the, in, the very interesting factor which basically emerged was that the best practices of the American model, the best practices of the European model, and the best practices of the Japanese model converged into the present uh, global uh, corporate governance frameworks which we see nowadays. So uh, historically, uh, with all of the disparity, uh, there was a lot of commonality. And through this commonality, we see uh, that the new corporate governance model has emerged, which is acceptable uh, across the regions and across the nations, and uh, is being uh, is being implemented across organizations in the best possible way to create uh, a harmonious uh, and a balanced global market and also to facilitate national markets in the best possible way. But in all of this, if we look a little bit historically, then again, COVID definitely has its own implications and its own complications, uh, which has changed the paradigm of doing business. Like we have seen uh, that the whole chip market, the global chip market has been adversely affected. And that, uh, that small sector which were adversely affected had a multiple effect on uh, different uh, corporations around the world because now everything depends upon the chipset. So we see uh, that uh, new paradigms, uh, new frameworks, uh, and new models, uh, and new structures have emerged, but with a more balanced approach and also seeing the fact uh, that uh, trying to create uh, a pragmatic, uh, implementable, and uh, globally acceptable corporate governance model. Thank you so much.